Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the show. We're here today on our episode 2580 of the Cabral Concept. All the three big takeaways, you're going to want to check those out. Those are three new studies that we're going through here today. That will be at stephencabral.com forward slash 2580. I want to go over some real definitive proof and guidelines from three different countries, the U.S., Canada, and Spain over in Europe that have done different clinical studies on alcohol and how it affects the body, namely in terms of cancer and potentially causing brain-related aging issues. And then I want to go over the amount of alcohol that each one basically says is okay to consume on a daily or weekly basis, and then let you, of course, make the final decision from there. All right, first things first, Let's go through the American uh, Cancer Society, what they actually say. And again, I'm going to link everything up for you here today. Uh, This one's going to be actually at American Cancer Society, which is cancer.org. And what they have said is that um, alcohol accounts for about 6% of all cancers and 4% of all cancer deaths in the United States. So just directly linked to alcohol. Now, sometimes there's, of course, someone consuming alcohol and cigarettes and something else. Okay, well, that can't just be from alcohol alone. So this is basically just related to cancer. Now, the American Cancer Society, as well as, believe it or not, even the committee that created the new FDA food guidelines so that's the um, My Dietary Guidelines, proposed that no alcohol be included on these guidelines whatsoever. Basically, their feeling was this. There's so little upside to consuming alcohol versus all the potential downside, which is a lot of it cancer, that they didn't want to include it at all. But this is where issues around big food come into question because To this day, they're still putting, oh, you must have dairy every single day. You must have grain or, you know, bread every single day. Uh, You must have, you know, you can consume a couple drinks a day. Well, that isn't the case by most of the experts um, and, honestly, the latest scientific research. So here's, and I've been sharing this for years, and I want to just give you these three studies. And I'm going to actually go through them fairly quick, and then I'll link them up if you want to get deeper. So the American Cancer Society said there's now pretty much, um, you know, really strong evidence that alcohol will increase the likelihood of you getting cancer of the mouth, of the throat, which is the pharynx, the voice box, which is the larynx, the esophagus. So if you think about it, okay, alcohol goes in the mouth, okay, essentially poisons those cells, right? That's tox- that's toxicity to them. Then it goes into the throat, in and around the voice box, right? The pharynx and larynx. And then it gets moves down the esophagus, all right? So that's basically a, a foot long towards the stomach, right? And then and they should have stomach on here. They don't, but stomach for sure can be, there can be alcohol related to that. Um, then it's processed by the liver, right? That's a big part of it. It goes through the colon and the rectum. Those are other areas for cancer, so liver, colon, rectum. And then for women, breast cancer. Now, I would say that there is some ties to prostate, but that still remains to be seen to a greater degree. So uh, they do go on to say, okay, that stomach cancer is most likely included as well. So there you go. Seven to eight definite ties to alcohol and uh, these seven or eight different types of cancer. Now, Let's go through Spain's study. Actually, let's go through Canada's first because Canada sums up exactly what the U.S. talks about as well. And here are their guidelines. They actually said that, uh, well, let me take you through them. So they give five different standards for their guidelines. And these are called key points from the guidance include, and they said there's a continuum of risk associated with weekly alcohol use where the risk of harm is... A zero, so zero drinks per week, 
Not drinking has many benefits, such as better health and better sleep. And you might say, well, I fall asleep better when I drink alcohol. You may get to sleep better, but for sure, your deep sleep isn't going to be there. So you're not going to get into that deep restorative sleep. They say at two standard drinks or less per week, you are likely to avoid alcohol-related consequences for yourself or others at this level. Because they're also talking about um, your physical harm as well as the violence that has a tendency to go up the more people drink. So I've talked about this actually for many years. There is a correlation with two drinks for women and three drinks per men per week, not per night, per week. So remember when the uh, old government guidelines were uh, two drinks a day for men, and uh, sorry, two, one to two drinks a day for women and two to three drinks a day for men. It's not that at all. They've cut it down to once a week. That's it. Because they know that definitively, the science says, and this is really good research, that if you have more than two drinks to three drinks per week, you are at a far greater likelihood of alcohol-related disease, and that includes cancer. And that cancer is a big one. We, were, we really want to take this seriously because we want to reduce any of the causes that may increase our likelihood of getting cancer. Because we know that by the year 2030, with all the toxicity in the environment, the environmental chemicals, the plastics, the smoke, all of these different things, heavy metals, it can increase our chance of getting cancer. And they're saying about one out of every two people. All right, so three to six standard drinks per week. Why do they keep saying standard? Here's what it means. About six, about six ounces of wine per glass, about uh, two ounces per hard alcohol, about uh, 12 ounces per beer. So we've got our spirits, we've got our wine, we've got our beer. Yeah, that's about it. So that, that's the alcohol kind of standard drinks, right? So that's what it is. Um, so at three to six drinks per week, your risk of developing several types of cancer, including breast and colon cancer, increases at this level. All right, seven standard drinks or more per week. Your risk of heart disease or stroke and or stroke increases significantly at this level. Okay, so now when we look at this and they, they have one more tier which says each additional standard drink radically increases the risk of alcohol-related consequences. Consuming more than two standard drinks per occasion is associated with an increased harm to yourself as well as potentially others. What does all this mean? It means that we have four main causes of mortality. Three are very much within your control. Three are very much within your control. Heart disease, stroke, and high blood pressure, let's include them together, and type 2 diabetes, which certainly if you're drinking this much alcohol, you can lead more towards diabetes. Okay, so we've got those three. We can absolutely control those through lifestyle. We, we absolutely can, regardless of your genetics. I, I have not seen a case to this day where you are not able to. It's certainly harder for some, I'm not gonna say that, easier for others, but you certainly can. Okay, so now the fourth one is cancer. And that's the fourth, so basically we're looking at the four main causes that cause all of 75% of mortality, right? Which is early death. Okay, we, there's a lot we can do to prevent cancer. And, no, and consuming less alcohol, less than two drinks a week, two drinks or less per week, is the best way to do that. I mean, the, the science is spot on. Okay, so that's the body, right? We've got heart disease, stroke, potentially diabetes, cancer. Now let's look at the study out of Spain. And this one uh, was done with both rats and humans. And the interesting thing is this, it actually affected what's called the white matter in the brain. Think of that as like neural synapses, communication uh, in memory, uh, motor skills, etc. And they found what I feel is two interesting things. One, the inflammation from the alcohol actually affected the white matter in a negative uh, result. But when there was an abstinence of alcohol for two to six weeks, they saw some improvement. So that means regardless of if you've been drinking the last month, two months, whatever it's been, when you stop drinking alcohol, almost like stopping smoking, you, the body begins to heal. And so that's the message I really wanted to share with you today. Regardless of what you've been doing in the past, if you can get your so-called house in order and begin to live more cleanly, for lack of a better phrase, cut out the alcohol, cut out the smoke, cut out a lot of the environmental-based plastics and environmental estrogens and, and even like all the EMFs, all these different things. And we can get just more grounded, more, more of a cleaner-based lifestyle. 
and you give your body the actual nutrients that it needs, the good, healthy food, these seven to 10 servings of the brightly colored, antioxidant loaded fruits and vegetables every day, clean proteins, healthy fats, uh, and then good nutritional supplements, your body will have what it needs to heal. So I wanted to share this with you today. I don't want to be a bearer of bad news, but I want to be someone that's also promoting health. And I can't, you know, in any way, shape or form, say that there are benefits to alcohol, all of the benefits that there may be in terms of like calming the central nervous system, this, that, or the other, or the small hermetic stressors, they pale in comparison to the negative consequences of heart disease, stroke, and, and cancer of many different varieties. So my recommendation would be this, use alcohol like maybe it was back in the day, many, many, many thousands of years ago when it was used ceremonially, it was used for like special occasions. Someone's going and getting married or you're with uh, friends that you haven't seen in many, many years. Maybe you have a drink together. Maybe you have two drinks together, but like, let's keep it at that. By the, by the second drink, you know, hopefully we're good. Like we've had that. We've enjoyed it over the course of a night. And that may be that. So I'm not here to tell you how to live your life. You can always say, I'm going to keep alcohol in uh, once or twice a week, but I'm going to do everything else, you know, great that I should be in. Okay. So like we always have to find the balance in our life. And again, that's why I'm not here to tell you how to live your life, but I just want you to know that if you are consuming alcohol, in my opinion, you'll want to be really dialing everything back in on the other side of that uh, to get the body back into a good detoxification base set and, uh, and to make sure that the body is achieving that dynamic equilibrium. So hopefully this was helpful. Let me know if there's any nuanced questions that I can help with. Feel free to leave them in the comments. Once again, I thank you. I appreciate you. Do feel free to share this research and this podcast with anyone you believe it could serve. Are you ready to heal yourself and then go on to heal others? If so, the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute can help you discover proven functional medicine protocols that blend the best of seven different healing disciplines from around the world. I personally share with you the exact handouts and protocols I use in my private practice that enable people to get well, lose the weight, and live longer, stronger. I want to pass this information on to the next generation of health coaches, and that is exactly why I created IHP. We are the future of the health coaching industry, and the skills and knowledge you will learn will make you an in-demand certified health coach anywhere in the world. Although we have many medical professionals taking the IHP certifications, no experience is necessary, and half our members have no previous health certifications. At the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute, our motto is a health coach in every home. Our goal is that you take this knowledge and then share it with family, friends, loved ones, your community, or in a practice where you create a career you love and can be proud of. The global IHP community is filled with some of the most kind and caring people in the world, and we can't wait to welcome you into our world soon. For more information or to set up a discovery call with one of our IHP Health Coach graduates, simply head over to integrativehealthpractitioner.org.